Hey folks, this is Rose from In Rose's Garden, and today we're going to make a really pretty necklace using um, beads from our Cloud May Bargain Bead Box, a Cloudburst. Now I know they've already done the co contest, and we're way late in getting going with this, but I really think, well, I haven't really felt like designing too much lately, but I really think that this one is really going to work nicely. So let's turn down and I'll show you what I have planned. All these goodies down here, but um, my main plan of attack here is you'll notice I have some a little copper wire over to the side. And I have done that because what I want to do is take our beautiful piece here and we're going to hook it onto this um, piece of the a toggle bar well I don't want it that close we had and besides it'll come off still so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of the jump rings that came with it and um, some of the links from out of our chain and I actually had taken these two apart for whatever reason and so we're going to put them back together so what I want to do here is we're going to take and I should have left that apart and put it on the toggle what we're going to do is we're going to put one of those things of chain to find the break there it is and we're going to open this up come on open up you're not opening very well you look like you're twisting down below instead come on so then we're going to put the chain on here do that on both sides And then we're going to put it on one of these jump rings that are from out of the um, kit. Now you're thinking, I'm sure, well, number one, what's she going to do with the wire? And number two, if it slid off with its own rings, it's going to definitely slide off with all these other rings. Well, that's what the wire's for. We're going to wire wrap. these rings so they stay there. So we're going to put them on, or at least one. We'll put both on. I'll show you what it's going to look like. We're going to let these drop to the to the circular spot where the dip is there, and it's going to hang down like so. But what we're going to do, because this is going to fall off, is we're going to take some wire and we're going to wire wrap around it, come it over the ring, Go back and go over to the other side and wire wrap it as well. This will fall off quite easily and I'm sure it's going to do it while I'm working on it, but, but we'll just get started on it and I'll show you what I'm going to do here. So we're going to pull out a piece of wire. This is pretty thin wire, I think it's 24. We could, you could use a bigger wire and it actually might be stronger if you did, but we're just going to pull out a length, oh say a foot or so of, of wire. that off. Tuck it under there. I'll put it to the side. And like I say, this is probably going to fall off while we're working on it, and that's just the way it is. 
So what we're going to do is, before we get to the um, loop part, this bump here where it goes down, we're going to wrap, oh, probably three or four times. There's two, three, and four. Push those together and get them up on the hill, so to speak. I want them up there. Then we're going to go five. I'm going to bring our ring down where we want it to be at and we're going to go around it. So it's sort of stuck in place right there by this piece of wire. And now we're going to wrap again three or four times on the upward slant. Just tighten that up if we want, like so. And now she can't go anywhere because that one wire is stuck over the top of her. See, like, see how that is? Now, instead of cutting the wire loose, we're going to just make some loose wraps. One, two, she's falling off, see? Go over here, three, four, and now we're at the downhill place again. So we'll wrap four loops here, three and four. And it looks like I probably have just enough wire. Now we'll bring this guy back up onto here, go around him as we come down for our four on the other side. I think we put four. We might have even put five over there. But, so one, two, three, and wow, just enough wire. So now see, this one can't move off either. Now we want these to be pretty tight, so we're gonna take our pliers and pull this one around because it's trying to be a little bit loose, so we want it to come around here, so just bring your pliers from the top and bring her over. Now the other one is doing the exact same thing because we started it with this one. So we want this one also to come around. Okay. And so there she goes. Now these are stuck in place with our little pieces of wire. Now if you want these tighter, get your Get your uh, nylon top pliers and again squish them around. Now, if you're wondering why I went around in a circle, it's because these are a little bit loose. So I'm finding the end, which way it's running, and then I am running my circle around that direction so that it holds tighter. So there we go. There is our pendant in place. Now, if you want it a little wider, what you got to do is pull these apart a little bit. This one is, doesn't appear to be right dab into the middle, which is where I want it. So there we go. There's our pendant piece made. Now the next thing I'm going to do... Okay, now that we've got our pendant piece made, I think that looks really cool with it hanging, dangling down like that. We're going to make, this is our clasp here, we're going to make our necklace portion. What we're going to do is we're going to open up one of the rings on either, well, two of them, and we're going to hook it onto the pendant piece. We're going to go up, oh, probably about that far, and then we're going to make some um, splits in our chain, and what we're going to do is we're going to take these pieces here, our uh, 
eye pins from our kit and our divider pieces there. And what we're going to do is we're going to make ourselves some, um, some pretty little um, one. I want at least three of these appetites on each one. Come on. Two, three, and then we'll have another spacer and one of the smaller or flatter crystals. We have the big one on the bottom, but we'll want a smaller one on top like so. Now we're going to make a, a wrap another another um, loop on this side and we're going to start hooking it into our chain pieces and we're going to have three of these on either side. So what I'm going to do is because it's easier to get these open and closed when um, there's nothing on here unless I'm using a looper which I probably won't do um, I will need to do them as we go along. So what I'm going to do is take this off of here. This works just fine, but I'm going to decide how many links of chain I want b between um, each of these. And I'm thinking probably nine maybe? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah. So we can open it up because it will open. It's I thought at one, one point it was welded, but it is not. So let's open up. This is number nine. Take this off. And then we're going to hook it right onto here since we have it open anyway. Come here, you. will go up this side like so and then the first crystal piece will go onto it so now let's do nine for the other side as well one two three four five six seven eight nine this is number nine so we'll put this on as well and close it up So then this is going to hang like so, or like so, depending on how you want that crystal to lie. I think it looks better this direction. And then we want to make, or we want to put on our, open this up, put it on the link and close it back up and we'll do that on the other side as well Get the loop closed. Looks like it was a little open. There, that's better. So on either side. And now we'll put the beads on and make another loop to put on the next link of uh, chain. 
which we will decide if we still want nine or if we're going to want seven then. But uh, let's get this going here. So, one, two, three appetite, one, two, three, and the crystal. Now, what you want to do to make a uh, simple loop is you want to just take and I'm going to use my, and I'm going to just wrap it around. You want to just wrap it till it meets. Now, because I've got all this extra space, I am just going to keep wrapping it until I get down to the bottom. Then I'll do my fold over by just taking hold of it and folding it here, like so. There's our simple loop. Now we're going to spread it a little bit so we can see where they meet. Where, where they meet is where we're going to take our clippers and we're going to cut the excess off. Come on, get in there. There we go. Now I'm going to take my looper, my pliers again and do another little twist so it's nice and tight. And there we go, we're all done. Now we'll open that up as soon as we decide how much chain we want to do and then we'll hook this little loop onto the chain. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. find one of the bigger chunks of crystal. This one is nice. Drop it down on there. Put on our spacer. Then we want three appetites. One. and a third four there's three now we want our spacer again and one of the smaller more flatter crystals so maybe maybe this one And now it's time to make that loop again. Now, if you didn't like making the loop the way I made it earlier, what you can do is guesstimate about how much you'll need, cut some off, just wrap it again just like you would have before. See if you got extra this time. Still do. See, I have about, oh, I don't know, maybe a sixteenth of an inch, so I'm going to get in. Cut that little bit off of the loop, wrap it again, see I'm pretty far down there now, and now you just do your fold over. There we go, there's our loop. Now I need to decide on how much chain we want. We're going to do six total of these little wrapped pieces like this. So it's going to go up the line. Now we're like this. Now do we want six, seven, or nine loops here? 
So let's see how much we got here. One, two, three. This is seven. I think we'll go with seven. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is number seven right here. And since we're going to open it up to take it off the other, instead of opening our loop back up, we will simply open our chain, make sure we have seven, hook it through this little baby, and then close it up. Now this side needs its new pin for our next one. So we'll just open this baby, put it on our chain, and close it up. Now we need the seven for this side. So let's count off seven and open seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and this is number seven. So we'll open this ring. As soon as I find its opening, there it is. So open this up. Take the major part of the chain off. Oops, nope, nope, nope. I want that piece to stay with me. Put it on the ring. Close her up. And we put our eye pin on this one. Looks like I didn't open her enough. Now we do exactly the same thing, put on our crystals and our appetite, and then we will go another seven up in crystals and appetite, and then we will decide what length we want the chain, the rest of the chain, and we'll finish it up. So let's get those going, and then we will um, keep doing well. That's the last of our bead strands. So now what we have to decide is how long we want this to be. So right now, the, they are eight inches, which makes this be, I think we broke one of our appetite beads. There's only two in this strand and I just found a half of one. So, yeah, see the gap we got there? So we are going to, it's a good thing we got an extra wire here. We are going to cut this loose and then we're going to put the new one on and rewrap it with one of these extra appetites over here. So, off you go, babies. Alrighty. Now we'll put. Now, normally gemstones I don't worry about so much, but chips are um, a different matter. Chips don't. Their holes are sometimes in really weird, close to the edge spots. They're not that big, and uh, so they can do just what they just did to me and break one off. Consequently, I don't work with chips a lot. Okay. 
So we'll put this back on. Come here, you. Looks like I might also have a bit of crystal. Come on. Where's your hole? Here the weird long one. Okay. Then we'll go back with our other beads. Now we'll trim that bit off and wrap it. Need a bit more off, not a lot, just a little bit. to tip it on its side. Okay, now we're fixed. Now, like I said, we want to check its length. So it is between our toggle bar and our pieces here. We are at 8 inches, so that's 16. That would be the very smallest you'd want to make it, because that, that's choker length. I'm wanting at least 20, I think. If I have these top two at my shoulder blades, then I would need, let's see, to go around your neck, you'd need about another 10 inches. That would make it 28. I'm not sure I want it 28 inches, but I do want it at least probably 24. So if this is 18, I mean 8, and we want it to be 24, we want it to be 12. So we want another 4 inches per side. So let's get 4 inches out. And I'm just going to split the chain again. Actually, I'm just going to hold it like this and we're going to go down here and we want this link as well. So you're here and then I want right here. I'm just going to put this in here so I know what length I'm making this. get the piece that's still attached to the chain, which would be this piece here, and undo it, put the chain aside, this is what we don't, and then this piece that's coming off is this one that we already had. Come here, you. Yeah, you need to come off of there. And I think I have you twisted up in there. So, how did we do that? <laughs> That's bizarre. <laughs> 
Uh, maybe I opened up the wrong one. Let's put this back on you. And it's not closed all the way. So to close it, take both pliers and just with a little bit of forward motion, bring them, push them together until you hear that click. Okay, we will just measure this, I guess. We're not going to have a lot of chain left because we were doing six inches on either side. No, that's more than six on that chain. So I must have done something wonky here because see that's six and a half. So we want it to come open right here. Take you off, put you back on here. Now we want six inches of this. Six inches, right? Open right here. Maybe I should have just left it. There's not much more chain left, but take it off. That's our extra. Now we're going to hook this, since it's open anyway, to one side of this. Close it back up. I don't think we wanted that much chain the more I think about it. Didn't we say we only wanted four or five inches on either side? Let's see what this length this is going to make this. It might be that I need to take some more chain off, because I think I need to think about that because I was thinking I didn't want that much so you wanted it to be 12 so or 24 so now we still have excess length there so we will take off this much right here and we're going to take it off with this loop, leave this one. Nope, we want that. Because what I'm going to do is hook it back up to the extra hunk of chain that we had sitting here so that we do have a little bit of chain left. I may decide I need to use it in a pair of earrings or something. So. Come on, you. You're not clicking together. You're actually being stubborn and hooking apart. Come on. There we go. So now we need to recut this other piece so that it's the same length. And it is four and a half inches we want it to be. So... Four and a half is right here. We'll open this link up. Bing. This piece goes on the extra piece. This should be the four and a half that we need. Yep, looks pretty good. So we'll open this one link up and put it on our necklace. So there it goes. And we'll close this up. And now we have our necklace at twenty-four inches. So now what we need to do is put the closure on. And we are done with this necklace. So so we'll put this little piece of chain aside. We'll bring this stuff forward. Frankly, this doesn't even need um, this jump ring because it's got 
all these um, all these links are going to be fine for closing it. So I don't think I'm even going to put that jump ring on. I'm going to just put the lobster claw on. And then maybe I'll put a tiny dangle on the other length so that it has a ending to it. So here's our lobster claw, which like I say can go into any of these links because the links are nice and big. Come on you, close up. There we go. As you can see, the lobster claw will go on any of our links here. So it doesn't need that other uh, jump ring. But I am going to... Hmm. I don't need a eye pin because uh, I'm just going to take these two little appetites and put them on a little a pin and um, wrap them onto the last one. Ball head pin is way bigger than we need, but that's all right. So put the two little appetite chips that are here. If I can find their hole. There's the one. There's two. So all we're going to do is just do a simple little wrap loop and make it so that we can get into this. And I wrapped that very poorly. Need to leave a gap so it'll go on the end of the chain. Let's unhook our lobster claw so it's easier to work on here. And we're just going to go through the chain and no, not two loops, just one. And put her on there. Then we'll just hold her and wrap. Now, since I'm just going to wrap this by hand, there we go. Cut the wire and Carefully tuck it so you don't break the chip. Okay. There we go. Our necklace is completed with a little tiny appetite link at the bo bottom to make it pretty and closing up our, and there we go. That's what she looks like. I actually thought of maybe putting a little appetite on here as well to um, actually give it a little more color and I may just do that. Since we wanted to add some color down here, I got some appetite, the appetite chip bag out. And I think all I'm going to do is take some of this copper wire, wrap it here and then just put three or four uh, appetite chips on either side. Maybe we'll put one here in the middle between the uh, two between the circles here. So let's just get some wire out. And we'll just take, oh, I don't know, maybe that'll do. And we'll cut that off there. 
then we'll cut this little bit off here at the bottom that's really chomped up. So then all we're going to do is wrap a few wraps right here. Well, whichever way I want to work. We wrap about three or four wraps right here to stabilize it. Ordinarily, I wouldn't have put anything on this because it's a really gorgeous crystal, but uh, with all the other crystal and appetite up above, we've got that touch of blue, and I want to bring the blue down into here. So, there's three, and we'll make this one be four, and let this hang a little bit, so if I need to hold on to something. Then what we'll do is just wrap sort of loose, loose loops between like, you know, like a quarter inch up, sort of like there, like that. Maybe it's more like an eighth of an inch than a quarter of an inch. And so we won't put an appetite on each spot. We're just going to put in three or four just to give it that color. that there and I'm trying to decide do I want it on the inside or on the outside oops come back here you I need to see what you look like here on the outside I actually think I prefer it on the inside where do you go again Get back up there so we'll sit it right there like so, and then we're going to bring our wire around, holding her in place, sort of there. Give her another one there so she stays pretty sturdy in place. Then we'll go up two or three more of those loose ones. put one more here. See it's only going to be about two and then one in the middle so here's this one it's number two. Now it looks like we're not going to get uh, we're going to get a lot more but the rings are have slipped down here so one two to tighten her up now we got to bring that ring back up here. See, it's way down there, so we want these to tighten just a little bit because the ring needs to come up here. And actually, we have this upside down. It goes this way. That's all right. It doesn't matter. And we're going to... We can do this one of two ways. We can put the copper wire through this ring so that it doesn't really affect it any or we can lodge it into place by wrapping the wire around it. So the question becomes what do we want to do? Do we want the wire wrapped around it so it stays put or do we want to go through and let it slide as it wants? I think we're going to put it through it, but then we're going to put an appetite right between the two rings. Come here, baby, come here. Okay. Now we're over on this side, so we're going to wrap once up here then we're going to put an appetite on Yeah. 
Come on, where's your hole? There we go. Now we're gonna hold it there. We're gonna go around twice. relatively close to it. Now this bar has fallen. As you can see, it's gone to where it wants to, and that's fine. That's sort of what we wanted it to do. Now we're going to bring this one, and then we need our other bar over here. We need to go through it. And we'll need to go probably relatively close to here. One, two, go on you. For our next one that goes right here, matching this side. So we'll put one on right now. See if we can find a nice chunky one to put on here. there. Bring her around so she's on the inside here. Then we'll do a close one here. And now I need to decide how many wraps. So there's one, at least one, two. You come out of there and go over there least one, two, if not three wraps there. Come down a little bit. Now, I think this is the one one, two, one, two. And now we want one really close to this one for our appetite. Ooh, no, that's really not a very big uh, chunk between it two. So. Okay, that's a better wall. So then this goes in here. Then we do one, two, and our four reps. One. Two. four wraps here. So one, two, three, and four. Now this is the front side here. Anyway, that's the side I want to be the front. So we want to bring those like so. This needs to come down a little bit, it looks like, so it matches that side better. Okay, so we want this wire to cut off on the back side as much as possible. So we'll cut that right there and tuck it in. Hmm, that didn't tuck very well. There we go, move you down. There we go. Now we need to cut this and tuck it in. So now that appetite is making a bit of a statement on our crystal. You need to go over some over that way. Okay. And that gives us a little bit of color down there by the crystal, too. So there we go.
all done. But that is not tucked very well, so we need to get that tucked better. That's better. So. Now we need to pick our appetites up so we don't lose them here. But uh, our necklace is finished. So here we go. Here is our necklace, finished necklace using the um, bargain bead boxes um, cloud burst. Where's the pendant piece and the necklace and I've made it so it's about 24 inches so the oh, come on get out of my hair baby so the back crystals see are right at your um, shoulder blades and it goes down there we see how it looks so anyway this has been rose from in rose's garden and again we have made this really pretty uh pendant using our um bargain bead box for may cloudburst now if I can get it off, that would be great. Oh, there we go. Had to find the pin for the, for the, um, lobster claw. So, and then of course, because this chain is such a large size, and I've used a lobster claw, if you wanted it shorter, you could just pull it up like so. So, I think that turned out very pretty. I hope you liked it too. Again, this is Rose from In Rose's Garden, and we have been using the Bargain Bead Box for May Clappers to make this lovely necklace. Bye bye.